now we need to do displacement versus time. Now for displacement, we know that we are going to start at zero. Okay, because initially there's no displacement. Then it gets thrown up into the air, so it is uh, has an initial velocity, does a lot of uh, displacement initially, but the displacement slows down, slows down until it reaches its maximum height, which we need to go and calculate. So we need to go and calculate maximum height for each one of these uh, projections, the throw and the two bounces. So, which formula are we going to use? Well, I'm going to use this formula, future velocity squared is equal to initial, velo initial velocity squared plus 2a uh, delta x. There we go. Here's the delta x that I'm trying to calculate. So let's just try and get delta x on its own. We can do that by just subtracting initial velocity on both sides. And then we get the future velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2a delta x. Now, I want delta x on its own, so I have to divide with a 2 on both sides. And I have to divide with an a on both sides. Okay, so dividing with 2a, 2a on both sides. And now I see that delta x is equal to future velocity squared minus initial velocity squared divided by 2a. But now that what I want to show you is that which future velocity are we going to use? Well, remember, we are actually now at the maximum height. So we're at this maximum height. We're not at that point. Now, the velocity at this point or the future velocity at this point is always zero. When you're trying to work out maximum height for a projected object, it is always future velocity zero. So this is going to be zero squared. So that's going to cancel away. So I'm trying to get to a formula that's going to make this easy for me. So this is going to be zero squared minus initial velocity squared. Initial velocity is going to change for each one of the bounces. So I'm going to keep, keep that one still a parameter divided by, but a is also going to be the same for all of them. So a is going to be 10, negative 10 actually. So now if I simplify this, I get negative initial velocity squared divided by negative 20. And now the negatives just cancel, so I get my velocity squared, initial velocity squared divided by 20. Here's an easy formula to work out my maximum height. Okay, isn't that easy? Okay, yes it is. So, now we need to do maximum height for all three objects. Okay, so we have our uh, formula here, delta x is equal to initial velocity squared divided by 20. Okay, if we are w using a equal to negative 9.8, we must, uh, this won't be negative 20, it will be negative 19.6. So that would give a more accurate answer, but when working with graphs, it's okay to, to round off a little bit uh, for our graphs. Okay, so let's see, for the throw, what is the maximum height for the throw? The maximum height for the throw, the initial velocity was what? Negative, oh, it was 11. So we have 11 squared divided by 20 gives me uh, 121 divided by 2 is 60.5. So the maximum height is 60,5 meters. Okay. That's just solving that one. You can use your calculator. I'm trying to save you some time. Okay, that's for the throw. What about bounce one? Bounce one, we went up at 6,6 .6, okay, meters per second. So that was the initial velocity. That's going to be squared divided by 20. Now, 6.6 .6 squared, I don't know, in my head. Okay, maybe you do, if you're a genius. Okay, 6.6 .6 squared. 43.56 divided by 20 equals 2.17. So that will be 2.2. So, I did this wrong. This is not 60.5. It's 6,05. Sorry, sorry. Okay, let's correct that. Okay, so here we have 2,8. Uh, sorry, 2,2 if I round. 2,2 meters. How did I quickly see that, that this was wrong? Well, obviously... If my, my first throw was 60 meters up in the air and my next bounce only goes 2 meters up in the air, then I know, whoa, whoa, something's wrong or 
or I'm throwing um, a rock or something that doesn't really bounce. Okay, but in this case it does bounce, so they should be not, not too far apart. Okay, so now the bounce 2 I went up 4 meters into the air, so 4 squared divided by 20 will give me 4 squared is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So 16 divided by 20 is 0, 0,8 meters. There we go with that. There we have our maximum height. Now we just need to know at what time will it reach its maximum height. Okay, well that's not difficult at all because if we go to our sketch, notice that the maximum height is always exactly in the middle. Always exactly in the middle. So since we know that this max, this time from here to there was how many seconds? Uh, we worked that out. The first time was 2.2 seconds. It means the maximum height was reached at 1,1 second. Okay? And this second one, the duration of that was 1.3. That was 1.3. Half of 1.3 is 0, 0,65. But 0, 0,65 is the time from this point to that point. Okay, that's 0, 0,65. Which means the total from the beginning, the total time that's elapsed if I get to my first bounce, the maximum height at, at the first bounce would be 2.2, that's the throw, plus 0, 0,65. In other words, this time here will be 2.2 plus 0, 0,65 is 2 comma eight five seconds okay and how about the last one the last one only and um, the duration was only eight seconds half of eight seconds will be the time from here to the maximum height that would be 0, 0,4 seconds and 0, 0,4 seconds must now be added to the total time up to now okay up to when the last bounce started and that total time is here. That was 3.5. The 3.5 was the 2.2 plus the 1.3. That's the time until here plus 0 0.4 would give me 3.9. So this time would be 3.9 seconds. Good. Let's go and use all of that information. I hope it's not too messy. Okay. So what do we have? We have that at 1.1 seconds, I reached a maximum height of 6. 0.05 with that 6.05 so let's make that 6.1 so at 1.1 this is 0 0.2 1.2 1.1 is here in the middle I'll get to 6.1 so 1.1 and 6.1 it's more or less there that would be the turning point and now the second point can be plotted anywhere that I know is also a correct point. So for example at 0, 0 when there was no time I was at no um, I had no displacement and after 2.2 seconds I'm back on the ground. Okay, So let's just put this information on the other sketch to help us. Okay then I can also see that after 2.2 seconds I'm back on the ground. So in other words my displacement is again 0 so, and that, that we can see. Okay, so in other words, I could have put this point here, or I could have put it there. That would have been an easy point to draw, okay, as well. So now for the second one. The second one, we notice, is at 2.85 seconds. So let's make it, um, uh, let's try and get to 2.85 seconds, as close as we can. And then uh, we have to go up 2.2 meters. So there's 2.2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yes, there's 2.2 and at 2.85, so there's 2.2468, uh, 85 will just be after 8, and I must go up for 2.2 meters, so that's 2, is there 2.2 right there, so if I draw it from there, that looks, that looks good, and it obviously also goes through th this point there, uh, but you'll see it's difficult to put it down there so what I can do is just put it on the other side until it passes through that point there we go okay, just 
plot it right there and that's also where I see at 3.5 seconds that's 3.5 seconds I'm back on the ground Do you see that 3.5 seconds I'm back at the ground awesome now at 3.9 seconds I must be 0 0.8 meters up in the air so there's 0 0.8 meters up in the air there is 3.9 is halfway between 3.8 and 4 so 3.9 is there I must be 0 0.8 up in the air click it there and drop it there but again I can't drop on another on another dot so I'm just dropping it on the other side there we go at 4.3 the total time it took and there I go it almost looks like my bounces do you see however the bounces don't go horizontal this is simply a graph showing the displacement uh, well this I enjoy a lot so I hope you enjoyed it as well uh, see you in the next video